twists can be a lot of fun. But before you can make twists, hopefully you already have a vise, but you'll also need a twisting wrench. We've looked at making a few simple tools in the past, so let's continue with that and make another fairly simple tool to make. This one doesn't require any hardening or tempering. It's made out of simple mild steel. You could probably make it out of wrought iron. You can make it out of some found steel if you want to. There are lots of different styles of twisting wrenches. All of these things can be used for twisting. This is the simplest style, probably one of the easiest to make, and you can make them one-sided, but I like two handles. It's easier to get a good straight twist. If they're one-sided, you tend to pull the twist off center. And these can be made in any, any variety of sizes. This is a wrench that was made by somebody with a water jet machine or a laser cutter and was sold with little stubby handles that were easy to draw out, put a little hang hole in there. And it's a very nice four size twisting wrench. I don't know who made that or I would give you their name and contact information. They may still be available out there online somewhere. A quite popular way to achieve an adjustable wrench is to take an old monkey wrench and simply weld a handle onto it. The problem with this is that they're not making monkey wrenches anymore and you're permanently altering or damaging an antique tool. That didn't bother me so much when I made these but I don't think I would do it again. It's almost as easy to make one of these as it is to weld a handle on one of these and the adjustment never seems to be quite smooth Seems like as soon as you need it, it jams up and doesn't want to run. But it's an option. The first one like that I ever made, I actually used a pipe wrench. This doesn't work so well because of the flex in a pipe wrench. But if you're twisting round stock for some reason, which is what a pipe wrench is made for, this works excellently because it will get a good grip on round stock. You don't twist round stock much because it doesn't show. You have to do something special to it that allows the twist to, to show off. Another option, and I don't have one made up like this, but I've seen other people do it, is to weld a handle to a crescent wrench. Now you could use just a crescent wrench or two crescent wrenches, but uh, welding a handle on it make, gives you an adjustable wrench that's a dedicated tool for, for twisting. I just have never made one. I've seen people use it like that, so it's another idea. But let's stick with something a little more traditional. Let's make a wrench like this. This one is two sizes. It'll twist 5 8 material here and will twist half inch material there. I think today we should make one that will twist half and 3 8 material. I could make it for quarter and three-eighths since I already have one that'll do half, but half and three-eighths are two very common sizes and I think it'd be a good size for a wrench. I have a piece of half-inch bar stock. For the, the one that has five-eighths, I use five-eighths bar stock. I always start with stock at least the size of the larger piece I'll, I'll twist. This is 30 inches long, so I'll simply just make a mark at the center. And I'll center punch that. And that corresponds, you probably can't see it, there's a center punch mark there. So this will loop around here, that'll loop around there. Really very simple. To make our twisting wrench, I've cut a couple of extra pieces of material. A piece of half inch and a piece of three eighths. These will be spacers for the, the openings in the twisting wrench so that we get them the right size. And I've rounded the ends over a little bit so they don't grab and leave a little nick in the inside of the twisting wrench which probably wouldn't hurt anything but might as well make it neat and clean. The other tool we'll need is a simple bending fork. This one is just a piece of 3 8 bar stock bent around wide enough that it'll go over that our uh, bending wrench, twisting wrench, sorry, will fit inside of it. And we'll show you how we use that. So let's heat up just a little off center. I'm going to heat up the, the side closest to my hand. 
And while that's heating, I'm going to put the bending fork in the vise. Those are really handy. I have up here on the wall, oh, two dozen, yeah, maybe a dozen, a dozen of those. Just in all sorts of different sizes, different size stock. Really simple, really versatile little tool if you're bending a lot of hooks or rings or other, other things of that nature. Okay, we have a nice heat. I think I can find our center punch mark, which is right there, and I'm going to put that through the fork. Oh, about an inch. And I'm just simply going to bend this all the way around into a nice U shape. First bend, mostly done. Now this first bend I'm going to use the half inch spacer. Doesn't really matter which one, just a, an arbit arbitrary choice. I'm just going to set that in there. I'm going to clean that up and try and make this pretty much parallel. And not super critical as long as it grabs the material when you use it. That's a little fiddly to keep that in there, but it's a nice expedient way to do it without making some special jig that you're only going to need once because you're probably never going to have to make these wrenches again. So, that's the end of side one. We'll do the exact same thing again with side two. So we do the exact same procedure over again. Find the center punch mark. Leave it through the, the fork about an inch or so. This could have been a little bit hotter. But we have our bend established. It's just going to take a little more time to clean that up because it was not hot through here. This was too cold. That's the reason that bin did not come out properly. We should have no trouble fixing our, our screwed up bend here. The problem we have though is if I just put that 3 8 spacer in for the 3 8 bend and hammer this, I'm going to crush this side. Now an ideal way to deal with that is something called a bridge. And you can put this in there and just work on that side. This is probably something not everybody has. This one was fairly simple. So it's all fabricated. There's no no forging done here. I'm going to put that back in the fire while we're talking here. It has a U-shaped piece of oh, it looks like 5 sixteenths or 3 eighths by inch and a half that supports a piece of old grater blade. And the road grader blade was just welded on there. I've never done anything to it, and it's been a pretty good tool. But if you don't have one of those, it's a little bit of a song and dance routine, but we can use both spacers at the same time. So we're going to put the 3 8 spacer in the, the side we're working on, line it up on the anvil, now if you've got a helper, they can hold this, and it goes pretty well. Although that really went pretty well anyways. So that's the basic twisting wrench. I think I'd like to close it up. The handles are a little bit wonky there, so I'm going to get that hot again and see if I can get everything straight in line. But you can see how this is not quite touching the spacer. So that's the problem right now. But you want to make sure you don't close these up so far that you can't get the material being twisted in. It's a little bit of an uncoordinated process there, but it does work. 
So that is a completely functioning twisting wrench. I think it could use a little bit more work myself. On the larger wrench, I've chamfered the edges and actually drawn this out so it's a little bit thinner. The half inch stock I think is small enough, but I'm still going to chamfer the edges and I'm still going to put a ring on one end for a hanging place. Now when I put these rings on, all of the ones that I make, I put the ring on the smaller side. So this is half and five eighths, the ring goes on the half inch side. On this one it's three eighths and half. I'll put the ring on the 3 8 side. That just helps me keep track of which side things go on. So the half inch side is the side that's hotter right now. So we'll start just by chamfering that so that it's more comfortable to hold on to. Something I didn't mention is that I had previously deburred the edge of this so there's no sharp corners on the very end. No reason to have tools that cut your hands when you use them. So this gives us a more finished look more comfortable to hold. This is something you can be more proud of in the long run. Now generally I do not like quenching material. if it's not being hardened. But for the sake of efficiency in getting this done and because that is at such a low heat, I'm going to go ahead and quench that end. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Now if you were making this out of some unknown mystery steel that you found on the side of the road, I wouldn't quench it. So now we can hold on to that. So we're going to do essentially the same chamfering on this side. But we don't need to worry so much about the end right now because we're going to draw that out and put a ring on there. So that's all the chamfering we need to do. So let's draw this out. Somebody had commented on one of the videos about the ringing of the anvil. And yes, it would be better if it didn't ring so much. Better for your ears, a little less annoying. I don't hear it as much in person as I do watching when I watch the videos and I'm doing my editing. But I think I'll 
address that and we'll do a video on how I think I might be able to fix that when we get around to it. There's several different strategies. I want a little bit of a shoulder where I started this ring. Doesn't need one. Just something I feel like doing. So I'm trying to keep my hammer and the edge of the anvil lined up. You can do a little bit of a half-faced blow, half on and off, if you need to straighten it out. But not too much, because you can actually shear it off. Try to keep everything straight. So we got a little taper. By now, everybody should know the drill. We've tape, done the taper square. Now we're going to make it an octagon. Now we're going to round it up. You can draw this out to a real fine point and put a little curly cue on the end if you want. We're going to start by bending that over, not quite 90 degrees, just the start of a what the circle might be like. And we're going to bend it up over the horn. Hopefully the hammer's not too in your way there. Take a look at it every now and then, see if it's the actually a ring as opposed to some other bizarre shape. And we can kind of close it up right there. There's a nice simple little ring. Straighten the handle back out. There we have a, a forged twisting wrench. The only other thing I'm going to do to it, and again it's a, just a personal aesthetic, not something you have to do, I'm going to get it warm enough to melt some wax and put some wax on it. You certainly don't want this thing red hot for, for the wax. That may be a hair, hair too hot. This is just beeswax. Of course, it, the smoke always goes right in your face. Just get it to kind of melt on there. I do like it that it smokes a little bit. They say this is just a little bit more than it needs to be. But that means it's getting kind of into the open pores of the material kind of like seasoning a cast iron skillet and make sure there's no blobs probably better to do this somewhere other than your anvil because now my anvil's all waxy just kind of wipe the, the excess off so you don't have drips we have our two twisting wrenches. We have three sizes of stock. One side, the half inch is duplicated. So we have three eighths, half. This one has half and five eighths. I started with 34 inches of five eighths square stock to make the five eighths wrench and 30 inches of half inch square stock to make the, the half and three eighths wrench. Twists are a lot of fun. They can really enhance a lot of iron work. They're easy to abuse though, so be careful. But you've got to have a twisting wrench, so go out to the shop, make yourself a twisting wrench, or two, or three, or more, and give some to your blacksmithing friends. Take them to your next blacksmith's get-together, and use it for an iron in the hat donation, or a trade at the holiday party this year, whatever it is you do in your group. In the meantime, Stay safe in the shop, enjoy blacksmithing, give a thumbs up to the video, hit that su subscribe button, 
eventually we will cover more twisting. In the meantime, Roy over at uh, Christ Centered Ironworks did a nice little video on twisting. Go visit his channel. He's got some good stuff over there. I think you'll enjoy it. And take a look at his video on twisting. I think he even does one on a twisting wrench. I don't know if it's his style or not. Admittedly, I haven't watched it yet. I better go do that. So, take care.